I've written posts on this before, but I'd like to share with you what I deem to be the five essential goals for physical therapy care. And as I've also said before, people treat very differently. We, different clinicians not only treat differently with different approaches, we also diagnose differently. But I think if we think in these larger terms, we can have some rubric to evaluate what is good care. Um, and systems across the United States and across the world do approach it differently. But when I sat down to think about, well, what are we really looking for? What makes care good? I came up with these five simple ideas. Um, the first one is that physical therapy needs to foster independence. There's a lot of care that relies on people being dependent on people, whether it's for manual techniques or instruments, using instruments as tools. Um, but if we're really doing our job, we, in the large majority of patients, can teach them how to treat themselves. And by using education and empowerment tools, people will also have some understanding of how to teach or self-treat problems that may come up in the future. We can't obviously give people the full breadth of our knowledge, but understanding the basics goes a long way. So I think our care needs to focus more on approaching patients with a model of getting patients to treat themselves. And in those cases where they need a little help, that's absolutely indicated. But lots of care that's repeat, 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 where something's being done to you is typically not a great model for musculoskeletal care. Number two, we want to reach the patient's goals. Now, if the patient's goals are unrealistic, according to what is actually going on with their body, then it's important to inform the patient on what your prognosis is and what you expect to see. But that's rare. In most cases, patients come in with complaints such as, I can't run without knee pain, or I can't sit at work without back pain, or I get headaches, or my hands go numb on a regular basis. And those complaints are typically fully resolvable, um, and we don't have to dampen down people's goals. The third thing that ensures effective care is being efficient. Um, I There's not many systems that are built to ensure efficiency or even measure efficiency, but it's rare that I see someone more than six visits. And I realize that different um, offices and clinics and paradigms kind of create different expectations in terms of patient visits. But I will say that I use the McKenzie method now. And for several years after I graduated with my physical therapy doctorate, I did not. And so I have some concrete data to say, when I look at my own practices, my own clinical ability, before I started using the McKenzie method, it was common. I would say more than 50 to 70% of patients I saw more than six visits. Um, and now it's, it's the small minority. And some of that is because I can check in a little bit with email or phone between visits, but I don't think the typical musculoskeletal episodic care, especially if we're talking about people who have not had major surgeries, should take, you know, 10, 15, 20 visits. Even when I approach someone who's had a major surgery, the way I approach it now is different. And it's better, but it's also different in that I see patients less. And, and when you come to my clinic or my office, a lot of it is education. This is what needs to be done when I'm not here and visits with me or are, are, are check-ins to see how things are going and see what needs to be changed. So I think we have a long ways to go in the United States with improving efficiency and it has to do with incentives and the different players, especially in the, in the payer sphere. But I know what we can achieve if we provide good care in terms of efficiency and number of visits and length of length of episode of care. The fourth thing we want to try to achieve is to the extent possible, full musculoskeletal system health. So that means full range of motion, full strength, full nerve extensibility, um, and full function, being able to do what you want, similar to the patient's goals. Now, 
there are certain instances where we're not going to be able to achieve that, albeit due to age or prior surgery or level of prior injury. But those situations really are rare. Um, you know, if someone doesn't, if someone's shoulder pain uh, is completely abolished and they can do everything they want to do, but it's still tighter on that one shoulder to go up the back into functional internal rotation compared to the other shoulder, is that really worth pursuing? Uh, usually not. I, I mean, I do argue that having full range of motion is one of the best, if not the best ways to mitigate, mitigate injury. But if it's a slight difference in range of motion, then who knows, maybe they're actually built that way. It's hard to tell sometimes. It's probably not worth months of, or weeks or whatever trying to attack that. But like I said, in the, in the large majority of cases, we can achieve full musculoskeletal health. Um, granted, I'm not an expert at, at attacking other systems of the body that influence musculoskeletal health. But to, to, my, to the best of my ability, I want to make sure that at least the neuromuscular system, neuromuscular system is doing what it needs to. And if you know, you've had a knee problem for 40 years and we can't get that last bit of flexion, it's usually not the end of the world. The other thing we can do to ensure uh, best case scenario for physical therapy is to teach prevention strategies. I'm really big on this because most injuries or most complaints tend to recur. We do know that, for example, low back pain, which is the number one thing that gets people into the musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal care system is a recurrent phenomenon. So teaching prevention uh, for me typically looks like this is how you need to um, possibly mitigate some factors in your daily life. The most common of that would be how long or in uh, what position you sit for long periods of time. Um, another way to mitigate uh, recurrence is checking your motion every day or just doing an exercise that ensures that you have full motion. Um, Strength, you'll notice if it, it starts to lag. Um, in those patients, it's typically like, do you have normal functional ability with your strength when it comes to your sport or your endeavor? But prevention really can make a large impact on how often people need to return to the medical system. And if I've done my job correctly, I've helped people in this episode of care, but I've also really minimized future episodes of care. So. Those are five goals that I think we all can work towards despite our difference of opinions in what's going on when things uh, go wrong in our orthopedic uh, scenarios and how to treat them. Because I think, I think it goes without saying that we want full range of motion. I think it goes without saying that we want to uh, prevent recurrence. But I, I, want, I would love to see those ideas put into more practice.